Practice Test Part 1 You will hear part of a radio program about fans. For questions 1 to 8, complete the sentences. You will hear the recording twice. As we're all too well aware, fashions have a habit of disappearing and then reappearing years later. This summer season saw the comeback of a timeless fashion adornment, the hand fan. With us today is Anne Boyle, fashion editor for Style magazine, to give us the lowdown on where the hand fan originated. Anne, thanks for coming today. My pleasure, David. Well, to begin with, it's important to point out that the hand fan has not always played the role that it does today. Starting out as a practical device in early cultures, it only went on to become a fashion statement in certain societies much later on. Pictorial evidence from primeval China shows fans being used to keep insects off the sacrifices during religious ceremonies. In the ancient world, fans were made from a wide variety of materials, ranging from wood in Rome to stretched linen in Greece. It is interesting to note, too, that these fans were rarely moved from place to place, and the portable version, the one that we know, didn't come on the scene until many more centuries had passed. Credit for the first folding hand fan is given to the Japanese, who are believed to have begun manufacturing them from bone and ivory sometime during the 1600s. It's thought that the idea for the fan's physical makeup is based on the way in which a bat folds its wings. This style of fan spread from the east via the trade routes of Portugal to the rest of Europe. Italian women, even then being the victims of fashion that they are, were the first to carry fans as a fashion accessory. These fans were made from finely handcrafted calfskin that was cut into strips and then woven together. In the 18th century, there was no better way for a woman to show her good taste and breeding than by carrying a silk fan painted and signed by a prominent artist of the day. In the 19th century, the fan became a means of non-verbal communication between a lady and her admirers. Believe it or not, a set code was developed and phrase books were published to translate a lady's gestures. The wide range of a woman's emotions could be expressed simply by the speed at which she fanned herself. The changes in society during the 1900s marked the vanishing of the fan from the fashion scene. As women fought for their rights, they no longer wanted to carry a fan, which they saw as a symbol of frailty. And as society moved towards modernity, it no longer needed the simple fan, which was outdated compared to its electric counterpart.